have you ever wanted to guest on a podcast like this one that you're listening to right now? Well, you can. You can definitely do this by visiting a website called Podmatch, where you can sign up and be available for all different types of podcasts that you can guest on. Or you can even search for a podcast and say, I want to, I want to guest on your podcast. I think we'd be a good match. So if you want to do this, you can go to our unique link, which is joinpodmatch.com forward slash reality. And you can sign up and do exactly that. And you can find us and you can guest on our podcast. So again, that unique link is www.joinpodmatch.com. That's J-O-I-N-P-O-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com forward slash reality, R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and you can be a guest on our podcast. Welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing The Other Way. So we're going to be discussing the final two episodes before the tell-all, the first tell-all. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're briefly going to touch on certain things in the previous episode, um, but the main focus, as I've said before, even though we're a little late on this episode, it's going to be heavily put on the final episode. Um, so before we hop into it, we do have hot goss that we'll be um, adding to the Golden Bachelor because it is related to to Gary. So we're going to put it over there um, with that. So no hot goss with this episode and um you will be getting the uh the first part of the tell all after this episode at some point during the probably sometime during the break you'll get it so that's can you can expect that um and uh, what else am i gonna say uh, and then with the final episodes, as mentioned in the episode recapping the tell all, um, you will get those after the break. That's the plan. So that's what's going to be happening so far. This looks like it's going to be a fairly good tell all. Anyway, um, we'll discuss a few other things on this episode. Um, uh, so it's not on the other episodes because those have been recorded previously and they're more of like the same formatting of what we do with our other shows, Merit at First Sight, Blow Deck, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of nothing is put in there in terms of what to expect during the break, but it is there. So what the plan is for for you during this time is you are going to be getting a lot of these episodes that are being recorded. You are going to be getting them through probably this week into next, uh, recording this on, uh, on the fifth. So you're going to be getting those, um, between now and then, uh, there are a bunch of episodes that you'll be getting. So not to worry, we'll kind of keep you going for that. And then there's going to be a special episode that you're going to get that is actually from the next take podcast. It is a Christmas special. So it's nothing like this. It's not recapping reality TV, but it's still something that you can have, um, 
for Christmas. So the plan is that you are going to be getting that episode, I believe, either the Thursday or the Friday before Christmas, whatever day that is. I think it's 21st or 22nd. So that is that the plan for that. So you will be getting that episode for, you know, the Christmas season. And then you'll get episodes again sometime towards the end into the beginning of the following week. So towards the near the January 7th mark into the the, the following week. So that is the plan. That's what you can expect um, to kind of keep you going while I'm off. And yeah, that's basically it for that. So let's jump into the reason that we are here. So Toe, season five, episode 21, Stranger Things Have Happened. So we will go couple by couple and I will decipher like kind of what happened the previous episode and then talk about this episode. So first, Brandon and Mary. So in the previous episode, we see like mom talks to Brandon about um, doing a little better with, you know, video games and helping Mary with the financial stuff because, you know, you are going to be a father and all of that. I think what people are not talking about is, like I said before, there are just true signs of depression in him um, that ex- and it's and not even to say like oh, people who play video games are depressed. No, it's not even about that. It's just that's their escape out of reality. So that's why he's doing it. And I hope he's doing better. We'll see. But, you know, that is kind of a conversation that mom ends up having with him. And he does say that he will do better. He'll get more involved and he gets it. The other thing that happens is that the mayor, the mayor is actually going to be marrying them. Fancy. That's real fancy. So that's cool. Um, and Mary, I thought she looked, I, I, I'm telling you, she is probably one of the most beautiful brides I have ever seen on any of these iterations. She looked beautiful so beautiful wow um and then they get married yay and all's going good right until the clear freaking end of worlds happen and the locusts come and show up i know they're not locusts but like that's what we're gonna call them the fucking locusts show up and i'm thinking okay so either god is coming and this is the second fucking coming. Or Hemotep from the mummy is alive and he's coming. And good luck to you. If you know, you know. I'm just saying. It's one of my favorite movies. Anyway, I'm like, what in the Lord Jesus? So now we're into um the current episode. So back with the bugs. <laughs> They're getting everywhere in the cake. They're getting in people's hair. They're getting people's. They're just. This is disgusting. This is fucking gross. Anyway, we'll get back to the cake. Hold on to the fucking cake, okay? They um are just crawling up Brandon's nose. He says Angela is having a panic attack, like straight up having a panic attack. Um, we'll finish up with this with her. Brandon like literally goes to her and she's like he's like my mom's having a panic attack and he's like brings her to the car checking her making sure there's no bugs in her hair um calming her down leaving her in the truck while he goes and gets Mary so it was a hot mess and yeah the bugs are like all around the cameraman we hear a producer saying kill the lights and the guy's like I'm trying and it's just like not going good um and so back with with uh with Brandon um he goes to get Mary and then Mary literally says here the bugs are getting inside of my dress and they're biting me I listen 
and, and I, if I actually, if you probably won't be able to get to get this, um, if you're not a Patreon subscriber or a Patreon subscriber to um, 90 Day Cray Cray, but on their coverage of the other way, um, I can't remember which episode it would have been. It, might, it actually might have been on the free feed, but I know they um, take certain things out of their free feed, and it's I, I got a I get a different version because I do have them. I do uh, subscribe to them on Patreon, but they talk about these fucking bugs and what the fuck they are, and the fact that these fucking things are po- like I don't know if the poisons is the right word to use, but I think poisons would be the right word to use, and the fact that these things are fucking biting her could be detrimental not only to her, but to their child. Now, spoiler alert, the child's here, child's born, child's fine, okay? Um, what I actually didn't talk about, actually, in the um, in the, the ver- in the coverage of the tell-all, which I don't know why I missed this, but you'll get this now, and then you'll listen to that and be like, why did you miss it? Um, the child's name is Midnight. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel. I feel like that's on the level of Apple. I, I don't know how I feel. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's pregnant and these things are fucking biting her. That's fucking great. Oh, Jesus. But again, don't forget the cake is coming back. Okay. With that in mind, the cake is coming back, but they go in depth with everything having to do with these fucking bugs from hell. So I would. If you want to know, you can listen to them. But yeah, so yeah, they're biting her. This isn't great. And then Brandon says, I lost my ring. Now, ain't that a fucking sign? <laughs> I don't know what else. Like, come on. He's literally said because he was taking his hands and like trying to get the bugs out of his hair, his ring fell off. Um, And then we had to see him looking for the ring. So in the next scene, we see he's still looking for that ring. We don't really know how much time's elapsed with him looking for this ring. But then he does find it, so all's good. So we hear Mary saying they're really hurting her. They're now in her boobs. They're really hurting her. For ever-loving Christ, are you kidding? What the fuck? What the fuck? And we'll kind of get to this too. Like, where the fuck did these things come from in a in a minute? But like, what the fuck? So they go, they go, she goes and she gets changed to get like, I guess she gets the bugs away from her and all of that. She goes and she deals with that. Like, geez. And then they're going to now leave. And Brandon's like, God. We didn't even get to have any cake. The cake keeps coming back. Let's let's continue. So this um we find out because Angela asks, like, is this something that normally happens? And Mary's like, No, I've never seen this before. Ain't that a fucking sign? God's mad. God's mad. God's like, this should not have happened. So bring the locusts like i don't know like this is so this is so weird why of all times that a swarm of fucking devil bugs come to these people's wedding and invade the fucking wedding how the hell does this happen oh my god jeez like oh man do you need do you know the size of a fucking fly swatter that you need to attack these fucking things the way they are attacking you like a huge one you need like the whole freaking country of the of um, to just swap these fucking things to death but anyways this is nuts to me so <laughs> angela is like listen y'all i was not expecting the plague you know the end of times <laughs> you know to come and like evade uh this wedding uh no, no one was. No one was expecting the fucking plague to show up. This is this is whoa. This will listen. This will go down in history. There will be all your people who showed up at this wedding will be like about them bugs though. This will go down in history for the wrong reasons, but it will go down in history. 
So they get home and they decide, you know what, let's let's take a look at the cake, see what condition it's in. What do you mean? What do you mean we're going to look at the cake? Let's continue. So Brandon's like, oh man, there's bugs all over the cake, but you know what? We can probably salvage this. Don't you think? You know what? We'll just take the bugs off. We're going to scrape the icing off and, and then, and then all's good. We can still eat the cake. Angela's like, no, thanks. I'm going to go to bed. And she does like hug everybody and say, thank you. You know, this was great. Love you. Bye. So let's go back to the cake. Listen, I love cake. Okay. I have a sweet tooth. I really do. It's fine. It is what it is. I don't, I am not a believer of wasting cake. Trust me. Trust me. Okay. Cause the first thing I thought of was the fucking cake is ruined. Now you can't eat that cake. And that's sad. Okay. Cake to me, wasting cake is, a, is just the same as wasting alcohol. I totally get it. It's, it sucks. But you know what? I am not going to eat cake that devil bugs were literally on because, okay, sure. They're dead on the cake. And yeah, sure. You only see them on the icing, but sir and ma'am, um, uh, these things are fucking, as we find out, are fucking poisonous and you're eating what they died on. There is a difference between what certain people will do and what other people will do. Me, I'm like, that is a damn shame. But you know what? It was a good run. I'm going to throw this out because I'm not eating it. Okay, listen, I won't even eat something or drink something that a fucking fruit fly landed in that isn't poisonous or whatever. Just fucking, that's just disgusting. I don't care if I have a full glass of juice. That shit is being dumped. I'm not keeping it. Yet these idiots eat a cake that the devil bugs were on. They eat the cake. Brandon makes a joke of, I don't taste any bugs. And that's that. But then he does say to her, listen, like my mom had the conversation with me. I hear her. I hear you. And um, I am going to do better. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, be better when it comes to the finances and all of that. And she is hopeful because now he can get a job that maybe, you know, he can uh, provide for, for the both of them, which, you know, they're married now and they're going to have a kid. And I think that's important. Um, so, yeah. And the other thing that I also didn't mention in the tell all is, I mean, I don't know how old the baby is if she just had the baby or, or, or what, but I mean, this changes things if she literally just had midnight, but if she didn't just have midnight, y'all, she looks like she's pregnant again. I wish I know there's been rumors that she might be, or she is, but for fuck's sakes, y'all, because we already know y'all like we're most fertile in the first year after having a child, you know, these fuckers don't use any sort of protection. Jesus Lord. Oh man. Anyway, that's it for them. Let's move on to Kenny Arnold and uh, Armando. This is very quick. So, um, they do tell us that they're going to be using Hema to be their surrogate. Um, they're going to be giving their specimens. And basically what they're going to end up doing is they're going to do like the milkshake method. They're going to put both Armando's and Kenny's specimens into basically like a milk, uh, like blender and just going at it and see who, which, which sperm wins basically. And here's what I'm going to say. I mean, this might be going a little too, a little bit into my, uh, into my private life here, but I was told <laughs> by um a doctor of mine that you know when it comes to sperm they are very aggressive in the sense of they have to be the one that wins and they even do it to themselves basically so let's pretend like we have okay in this case you have kenny you have armando 
And let's pretend that these two different sperms are going to basically fight for which one wins. And that could actually be detrimental. That's part of the reason why it can be difficult for someone to get pregnant. And then let's just pretend then that it's just Kenny. And, you know, let's pretend he's... Well, it doesn't have to pretend like he's not gay or whatever. So we... They, if they continuously insert sperm into her every day or whatever the hell, even then the sperm cells will basically attack each other at that point because they the best win, basically. I never knew that. I mean, you know, like you're not supposed to, if you're actually trying to get pregnant, you don't have sex every day. It's not good. You're not gonna. It's not gonna be successful if you do that. I just didn't know the reason why. <laughs> like truly, the reason like that that being the reason. I, I didn't know that, or that being part of a, a part of the reason. So, to me, I'm thinking they could fucking fight each other <laughs> and see who wins. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking. But anyways, this is what they're doing. They're going to let science determine who the biological father will be. I personally don't think it will matter to them. Um, Either way, it doesn't matter. This is their child. Who cares? But what is weird to me is that they're doing this approach anyway, because I thought the whole thing for Armando was that Kenny biologically fathered the child because they have Hannah, who's biologically Armando's. And Armando wanted to have a piece of Kenny once Kenny was no longer here. So I'm confused as to why they're doing it this way. That was a little surprising to me. But anyway, we don't know what conversations they have after the fact. So whatever. Um, but anyways, Armando says, like, this is weird because they're going to be, they got to, they got to, you know, <laughs> as Kenny says. Bang it out, masturbate, jerk it, pound me. I don't even know anymore. I'm just trying to, you know. But yeah, they kind of, Kenny just kind of says different ways to uh, get her done. Um, So, yeah. So, Amanda's a little weirded about it. So, then we kind of see where they're going to be going to get her done. Kenny gets the small ass fucking room that literally just looks like this chair replaced the toilet and there just happens to be a fucking TV screen in there. It's the weirdest situation. It's so tiny. It's literally the equivalent of like a powder room. It's so teeny. So he gets that room. Armando gets the fucking suite with a bed and there's a a bathroom in there. He gets a whole fucking to do, and we're like, pull away. You're trying. Wait, you couldn't give you couldn't give Kenny, who's older, the nicer room, and let Armando squeeze his ass into the smaller one. I mean, I do think mentally maybe this was better for Armando to get the suite, but I'm just thinking like, god damn. Anyway, whatever. So you kind of see them like texting back and forth. Um, Kenny trying to, I guess, make Armando feel better. And it's, it's, you know, it's cute. And he's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm thinking, I'm thinking about you. And oh, okay. Anyways, Kenny finishes first. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Kenny finishes first. And he's like, oh, he's still in there. I guess I'm just quicker. <laughs> Jesus. And then Armando comes out and he, not long after, and he's like, you know, those text messages that really helped. Thank you. I made me feel better and all of that. But um, they're basically told at this point now that from now, the process could take about a month or two um, to kind of get everything going. So yeah, I guess we'll get an update at the tell all. We didn't get an update at the, the first part, but um. There is, uh, there is one update that we did. Again, again, I didn't talk about because I really wanted to focus on the main things that happened in the episode. Um, 
which is that they are now in Mexico City. They have moved to Mexico City. So that's really great. I'm happy for them. And I think that makes the most sense, obviously, because that's where they're doing their journey of of getting um, a, a child. So it makes the most sense, I guess. But yeah, they're in Mexico City. So yay. I guess we'll get more details because maybe they didn't actually move yet, but he is in Mexico City. So we'll see. Anyways, that's it for Kenny and Armando. Sarper and Shekinah. So from the previous week, um, he basically tells her, you know, you got to be more flexible. You know, I was more strict and I'm bending and th- who gives a shit? Your idea of being more flexible and for you and bending is just not fucking, you know, 25 and one. Like, I don't understand. Like, what, do, what are you changing? And we'll, you, listen, I go in on that whole situation of like, uh, in the, in the tell all, this fucking guy is just, he was entertaining until then. But even then, I'm just like, I'm, ugh. anyways. Um, so she definitely, um, holds her own in all of this. But then he says to her, he's like, why aren't you crying? You're about to lose me, sir. Wait, wait. (laughs) Let me tell you something. I have rarely cried to a man when I know that I'm quote unquote losing him. Maybe I want to lose you. Um, So yeah, I I rarely cry. Maybe, maybe I'll cry after the fact, but I'm not going to give you the, the fucking joy of seeing me cry. No strong ass woman will do that. And she was strong in this moment. I'll give her that. But I'm just like, you're about to lose me. Why aren't you crying? Fuck you. <laughs> so she, um, she's like, you know, I'm not going to cry and blah, 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 like whatever. And I can't remember exactly what she says to prompt this because I was really focusing on the bullshit this guy was saying. But he says, listen, I don't care. I It will take me two days to get over you. Oh, it will take you all of two days to get over me? Well, then why the fuck would I want to stay? You know what I mean? Then will the two days fucking begin, sir? Let's see how quickly you come running back saying, you know what? I fucked up. We'll get to it. And then she says to him, like, my family was right about you. And he's like, what did they say? That you're a fucking asshole. That's what they said. But listen, huh, we'll get to her family really soon. I can't remember if I mentioned this in that episode, but you want to talk about how your family is right about him, yet you now you don't talk to anyone in your family. Let's continue. So, and she tells to him, like, you're about to be my past. He's like, you threatening me? Are you threatening me? Yeah, she is. Anyways. Um, he's like, book your flight as soon as possible. And so then she calls her bluff, uh, calls his bluff. So we'll go into the current episode. So the current episode, he, they get back to the apartment and the fucking look he gives her that when he gets like to the door, it's like, are you good? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with face? Fuck. Anyways, but she immediately locks herself into the bathroom and we see her kind of like packing and stuff. Just, I'm going to go to a hotel. I told him to book my flight. So I'm going to go. I'm leaving. Fuck this shit. And he's like, I hate this stuff. What do you hate, sir? What do you hate? You literally just told her to book her flight as soon as possible and how you're going to lose her. You're going to forget her in two days. What do you, what do what do you hate? Everything you hate is what you created. And she says that she says as much. And it's just like, I hate this stuff. Logan. He's like, I was being transparent. My anxiety. Your anxiety? <laughs> Listen, I'm not laughing that he says he has anxiety. I too deal with it. I think a lot of us do, honestly. But for you to use your anxiety in this moment, when it's you that has created the moment in the first place, and you're basically literally like my anxiety it's like what you're the reason this is a thing 
right now. And you want to cry to her about your anxiety. Like, what? <laughs> My anxiety. It's literally so, wait. So you're trying to tell me that in any moment that I have an argument with my boyfriend, I should just, I should just use the anxiety card. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, for me personally, like, listen, if I, I, listen, again, like I said, everyone has anxiety and it can be really bad. You could have that kind of under control. I'm kind of one that has it more under control now than I did before. I think I've mentioned that before, but I can say, listen, if my man were to literally tell me my anxiety during an argument, I'd be like, listen, I understand. I understand. I get it. I, 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 I'm not discounting the fact that there is some shit, but right now you fucking fucked up and I don't want to hear about your anxiety. I really don't. Your anxiety will be under control if you don't fuck up. My anxiety. Jesus the fuck Christ. Anyway. So. Yeah, so he complains about his anxiety and he tells her to not pack her stuff. And he's like, I thought she was bluffing, but she he, he won't let her go, basically. And he starts taking her clothes out of her bag and she's like, you want a child? You are a child. Yes. <laughs> but like the thing is, it's like, you think she's bluffing or you thought she was bluffing. Sir. When you tell someone, listen, when you show your ass to somebody, they're going to believe you. Now, she doesn't continue on believing him, but that's the thing. It's just like, if you're going to tell me to pack my shit, book my flight, go back home, then I'm going to. Like, I'm, I'm just going to do those things. I'm not going to play your fucking game. Because clearly you're trying to play a game and she's calling you out on it and you're like, oh shit. Like, the fuck? Anyway. So, he tells her, listen, stay. Stay. I'll sleep on the couch. You can stay here. We'll have our separation. He's like, no, I don't want to stay here. I, I, we, I need a break from you. I don't want to see your face. He's like, we have an extra room. Okay. I'll sleep in there. And you you sleep here. And you're not leaving. And, um, he's like listen if you leave this house i'll delete you from my life oh my god <laughs> oh my god this fucking guy shut up like literally i you want to like scream sir listen i know you don't have experience in relationships and don't understand how to maintain the emotional aspect of it as well as the sexual aspect of it the sexual aspect of it is easy. Okay. That's the easy piece of them. It's squeezy. That's easy. Okay. As long as everything is, you know, in tune with each other, you're good. But the emotional aspect of it, the mental aspect of it, that's hard. So it's, you literally are hearing this guy literally say, I'll forget you in two days. Uh, if you leave, I'll delete you. Like, first of all, first of all, can we stop? Can we stop? Okay. Stop it. Instagram is not real, okay? <laughs> but it is to them. I understand that. But anyways, you don't say to your significant other, if you leave this house, I'll delete you. And expect what? <laughs> she literally says, that's on the level of the two-day comment. And why the fuck would I stay here? Like, you're you're... Just keep on digging. Just keep on digging. You're about four feet in now. Like, what the fuck? Like, oh my God. I'm just like, oh my God, dude, shut the fuck up. Stop while you're fucking ahead. Like, maybe you can salvage this, but you say to her, I'll delete you. And it's like, well then, I'll just delete myself because that's what I want to do. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, she says, can you fucking leave so I can pack my shit? And he leaves and he's like, do what you want. And she's like, yeah, I will. And y'all, she actually leaves. She goes to a hotel. That's pretty, I'm pretty impressed in this moment. That is short lived, but I mean, I'm pretty impressed in this moment. So, um, so she, we, in the next scene, we find out she's been in the hotel now for about two days. Um, and she's like, I feel like he did the, um, the Turkish bath 
to basically butter her up to to have the conversation about kids. Th- yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely possible, 100%. And um, she's like, you know, he showed up at the hotel. We see like this video of him. Like, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. It basically gave me breakfast club feels. Like, don't you forget about me. Like, seriously, that's what it felt like. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, that's basically what he did. And we see another video where he's like, baby, I miss you. I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck it said, but basically it was kind of like that. He was just like, come back to me. <laughs> like, it was just so weird. But this is the shit that she buys. And I'm just like, the fuck? And listen, when you are in love with somebody and they annoy you half to death and they do the little things that make you smile, like my, my man does it too. Even if I'm upset with him, you know, because he, again, he is south african and he is a south african dating a jamaican and he'll do little things where he'll like picture an african with an accent doing a jamaican accent it's fucking hilarious but he knows that this is something that makes me laugh so you know men know what to do to make it better and whatever but this is basically what he does in this video like (laughs) yeah it's just i can't He's literally, literally, he might as well just kind of be like, what a man loves a woman. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, he asked for a second chance and all of that. And she sees that he's trying. So, you know what? She agreed to meet with him. And I said, this is, this is the bar that you have. Jesus. Okay. So he said, y'all, I felt horrible. I felt really bad. Yeah? Okay. He's like, I couldn't breathe. And he hopes that she forgives him. Uh, Okay. He apologizes. And he feels... He feels so ashamed to look at her. So he looks down at the ground, y'all. He literally is like, I'm ashamed. And then looks down at the ground. And I'm like what he's like if i look at you he's treating her like she's fucking medusa if i look at you with all the shame i might turn to stone like jeez. anyways um (laughs) he says listen i could not forget you in in two days i couldn't even forget you in two decades and i'm pretty sure there was one point because i don't want to forget this pretty sure there was one point where he looks up at her and he talks to her and then when he's when he's done talking to her he's like goes back down and looks up back down on the ground like shame (laughs) it was so so fucking weird anyways and he says he couldn't forget her in like two decades so when you're 60 something then you'll start forgetting her Kind of sorry. So she tells him, like, I can't forget what you said. And he says, I can't live without you. And he will not insist on anything. He basically says, like, the child conversation is put to rest. He says, not important. And she says, like, I just, it's hard to trust that, obviously. And I get that. That's fair. And he says, I don't want to push you. He says that, yes, he may want kids. And yes, his parents might want kids, uh, want grandkids too. That, that should not determine, listen, just because maybe your parents want grandkids, that should not determine whether or not you have kids. If you don't want to have kids, then don't have them kids. I'm just saying. So, yeah. So he said, yeah, they may want that too. But he says, if she doesn't want them, then I will not force it. But I I do wonder, and I think what she's saying is like, will he resent me for this if I don't want to have kids? Anyways, he says he will never bring it up unless she does. Sir, she never will. (laughs) She never will. Anyway, she feels a little uncertain, but she does forgive him and she will give him that second chance. Some people don't deserve a second chance. I'm just saying. But anyways. Do you want to spice up your love life? 
Well, you can make that happen by going to Love Shop where you can get sorts of different things, whether it's for both you and your partner or just for yourself. For solo play, you can get things, all types of vibrators, maybe more kinky type toys, or you can just buy what every person may need, like lingerie or protection, or even just something to make it a little more fun, like games or novelty things. You can do all of this by going to Love Shop, and you can use our unique coupon code REALITYT2 to get 10% on anything your hearts desire. So that's loveshop.ca, L-O-V-E-S-H-O-P dot C-A, and use our unique coupon code REALITY2, that's R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and the number 2. Anyway, that's it for Sharper and Shekinah. Let's move on to Danielle and Johan. Oh boy, this was this is the reason why I'm still covering this episode because Lord geez. Let's get into it. So the previous episode, they after the conversation of, well, this is done, is they still decide to go, you know, give the kids the gifts, whatever, right? Um, but here they are in their car, still just, you know, breaking up, dressed as Santa and her as an elf. Like it's, 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 this is peak 90 day. This is perfect. I'm just like, it's the most worst day of the year. Like, seriously, they're like breaking up during Christmas. God, there's nothing worse. I don't care. Listen, if someone breaks, I mean, maybe Valentine's Day if you're into that, but like Christmas, <laughs> fucking Christmas. Jesus. Anyway, so she, and this is kind of, we get that line of, he's breaking up with me at the happiest time of the year. Then they go back to the apartment and he's going to pack up his stuff. But there was a comment that was made where he's like, you don't do anything for me. So then when he decides to take his clothes that she bought him, she's like, no, Johan, no, no, you can't, no, you can't take that. I bought that. That's mine. What the fuck are you going to do with it anyways, first of all? Anyways, you should say, no, no, that's mine. You can't take that. You say, I don't do shit for you. You can't take that. You can't take the things that I did for you. You can't. Your Zumba classes, sir. I did your Zumba classes. You say, I don't do nothing for you. Anyways, she's like, no, you're not taking that. And he says, I'm taking that. But then he then decides, well, guess what? Since uh, I can't take my clothes that you claim that I that you bought me, I'm going to take Gizmo because I bought him and she says, Johan, no, you can't take my dog. You can't take my, sh- you can't take my dog. And then she does grab the dog, thank God, and then tells everybody to get the fuck out of her apartment. And that's basically where that episode ends, all this while dressed as an elf. Um, mm-hmm. And in the next episode, and this is when it gets good, guys. In the next episode, um, we see her packing. And she says, I want nothing to do with anything that he's touching in this house and we do find out he officially left about a month ago and she is leaving the apartment for good this is it she says that she's going to be hosting retreats so she's going to be staying on the the grounds of the retreat where the fuck does this woman host retreats at like what the fuck anyways she's hosting a retreat great um we find out here that my girl got text messages from another woman on social media who says that she has been in a relationship with Johan for two years. Let me repeat, this woman has been in a relationship with Johan for two fucking years. This has been going, this this predates the relationship with Danielle. Are you fucking kidding me? Listen, Danielle is a horrible person. There's no, there's no if, ands, buts about that. She, she, yeah, you made some decisions that maybe you shouldn't have made and whatever. But what I can't do 
on this podcast is say that she deserved any, deserves any of this. I am coming from a person who has been cheated in this way. When you find out that the person you're with has been in a relationship or is in a relationship with somebody else while with you and is fucking playing you like a fucking puppet the entire time, it's hard for me in that position to blame her for this. I can't do that. No one deserves what the fuck this fucking guy was doing. This is the, the shit that comes out is so deplorable. It makes me sick. Like two things can be right here. Number one, Danielle can be a bitch, 100%. But the other thing can be no one fucking deserves this, not even her. This is fucking disgusting. What the fuck? So we're going to get into everything that kind of came out here. I do have the text messages. I am going to read them for those who maybe didn't watch this episode. So the woman actually messaged Danielle wanting to know, are you guys really getting a divorce? Because he texted me asking me if I can give him money for a divorce. Bitch. You're fucking dumb. Listen to me. If my if someone that I was married or not sorry, let me rephrase. If I'm with someone that I first of all, a bitch knew she that this man is married, okay? So you're no better than him in so many ways. But you if I had a man that I've been sleeping with or in some sort of relationship with now for two years, and he comes to me and says, You I need to divorce my wife. Can you send me money? I'd be like, the fuck? I, he's disgusting for asking and you're pathetic for giving it to him if you will give it to him you two deserve each other i guess i don't even know because this is so stupid but this kind of explains everything so let's get into the text messages so the messages from this idiot this 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 bitch not danielle this bitch she says i'm writing to you because johan has been writing to me all this time, and these days he asks me to speak with a lawyer to pay for his divorce. This situation is very uncomfortable for me, bitch. Then you could have seen yourself out of this fucking situation. Let's continue. Um, because I don't know if what Johan says is true, yet you still fuck him, you stupid bitch. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I'm sorry. Just because a man has a big dick does not mean he's good in bed. Those two things don't equate. This guy can't. Come on. I don't care. Listen, I don't care how big a man's dick is. This shit. I'll find someone else who, who is maybe even better than you and your big dick. Like, are you kidding me? Ugh. Anyways, let's continue with the dramatic reading. So, um, the next message is, he's written to me all the time, every day for two years. And then Danielle says, send me screenshots of your conversations, please. And she's like, I have some intimate photos and some audio. Bitch, send that shit. This is not a drill. Send the shit. Let's continue. So Danielle says, so you had a sexual relationship with him in the past? Did he tell you that he loved you? My girl, this, this bitch says, I traveled in August and he came to see me at the hotel. I'm going to rehash this. We're going to get into it. Let me finish. I gave them money. Them. Who's them? <laughs> I gave them money in theory for a mortgage payment or a credit that they had to pay for the parents' house. Wait. These bitches knew too. These bitches knew too. Let me finish though. You notice how she said, I was there in August and, you know, wait. Isn't that when she was on her retreat? Was in August? Literally. So while Danielle is off doing whatever the fuck, we have a little Johan there on his fucking phone being like, yo, she's going to be leaving in August. You need to come through. This is fucking disgusting. They're both disgusting. Anyways, let's continue with the dramatic reading. I was there 
I was with him there both times I traveled. I was with him in August when I went back and you were on a retreat. This bitch. This bitch. So here's what I'm going to say. Like I said before, if you, listen, I don't know, and I don't care if he was in some sort of something with you um, before. I don't care. But the minute this man decided to get married to somebody, get the fuck out of someone's relationship, you stupid whore. I'm sorry. It takes a lot out of me because this triggers me. This really does trigger me because I've been here and I've done this. So it's just like when I see this woman kind of being like, you know, I've been like in this like with him for like two years and I was there when you went on your retreat. So let's also rehash that too, because I don't remember if Danielle talks about that, but I'm going to rehash this too. So while she was on this retreat, you were fucking this bitch and stealing money out of Danielle's account. To what? Feed this bitch with Danielle's money? I would fuck him up. Puh. He would be. I would. I would. Mm. This is why women kill. You all know that show? I don't know if anyone watched that show, Why Women Kill. This is why women kill. This is why. This is why we do it painfully. We'll poison your ass. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, this is so sick. This is so sick. So triggering to me, too. But, anyways, so we find out that from Danielle that she apparently met Johan's father and his nephew. And gave the money, as mentioned uh, in the text. Um, so that's like also just I had to, I, fuck his family too because I don't know like if everyone knew in the family, but fuck his family too. How dare you know that he's been in this relationship for two years? He's now married to another woman, and you just let him do it. This is fucking disgusting. You're all disgusting. Every single one of you. Like this is this no. Anyway, um. So she's like, they've been having sex the entire time. The girl knew he was married. Yep. And he most likely brought her back to the apartment. So fucking lootly. Because this man can afford a fucking hotel, please. It's fucking disgusting. Um, Danielle feels that um, the girl only told her this to get her to a place so that she could be with Johan. They can be together. The, absolutely this girl didn't this girl did not text her to verify if they're actually getting a divorce um not at all absolutely not but she texted her to basically be like i was letting you know that he's with me and fuck you the, you know like get the fuck out of here he never wanted you anyway that's basically what it feels like and it's just like this is this is nuts it's just, it's, it's, it's nuts to me, really and truly. Um, so she sent her pictures that Johan had sent to this bitch, um, were basically, um, it was pictures of his dick and he sent this dick pic to this bitch while they were handing out gifts to children the month before i can't i can't i just can't i just can't are you kidding me what the actual fuck is wrong with men but this is the thing this is why he he never loved danielle just very clear he was using her um and this was probably i guarantee this bitch is american and this is why he wanted to get to america and the fact that danielle never took his ass to america is when things started to change. This is why. Because probably his goal was to always get there on Danielle's back and give a shit so that he could be with this with this person. It's very similar to like Muhammad of Muhammad and Eve. I'm pretty sure he was talking to that bitch too before he got to the States. I don't know if he's still with her, but like it's it gives me those vibes. This is so disgusting. Anyways. Um she realizes that she has been wearing rose-colored glasses. We all do. We all love the, you know, 
But she really was wearing some thick ass rose colored glasses because I saw the red flags from the, mo- the moment they were on the first season of uh, their first season of Love is in Paradise. It from the moment you don't marry someone that you've only known for five months. Listen, he might have great, he might have a great, he might be great in bed. Clearly he has a big dick. That's great. That's all fine. I, I'm not going to say don't fuck him, but leave that shit in, leave the vacation bang, a vacation bang. Do not then marry the vacation bang. Are you kidding me? I think, listen, you like what you like, but I I feel like with Danielle, she needs to stop going after men that she probably really has no business going after. She's going after these men that, and I'm not trying to shame her because again, like I said, you're into what you're into, but you don't get into serious relationships with men that you that really and truly are not in a place that they want to have a relationship, a serious relationship, or if they want to have kids or whatever the case may be, just don't do it. Fuck around, have fun. I don't give a shit, but don't marry the guy that you should only fuck around with and have fun with. This guy is a fuck boy and he's going to fuck over any woman who comes his way. It's not going to end with Danielle. It's not going to end with Danielle. He's going to do the same shit to this idiot too. It's pathetic. Anyway, so then she ended up deciding because his uh, laptop was still at the apartment. She dug through his laptop um, and she found more women. She says that there's at least six other women that he's been either getting money from or having some sort of relationship with or something. And it's just like, this fucking guy's disgusting. This fucking guy's disgusting. I can't believe like, and again, we don't need to have one person have the villain edit and the other one be good. They both can have the villain edit. Like, you know what I mean? They can both have the villain edit in their own way. You know, this guy got such a fucking good edit in his first two seasons. And then this, it's just like, this, this is, this is different than like, Tanya getting the villain edit and Sinjin, you know, whatever. And then like after the first couple seasons, you're just like, oh, this guy's fucking garbage. But he didn't do half the shit that is happening here. Johan is beyond garbage. He is just that. mm, We need to throw the whole man away. Now, I don't, I know we don't have a garbage bag ban off, but we'll make one. Just throw the whole thing away. Fucking guy. Anyway. So she says that she has tried to talk to him about what she has found out, but he refuses to talk to her about it, which I think, um, let it go. Just let that go. Let him do his shit. Like, just count your blessings that you found out now could have been worse and just be done with it. You know, he says like he's act. she says like he's acting dumb about the pick and not like, you know, owning it. And, um, she says he's a monster. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Anyway, that's that with them. So very quickly, not much here to say. Holly and, and Wayne were in the previous episode. Um, he basically says, like, I wish maybe uh, I didn't marry you while they're at the same place where he fucking proposed to her. Um, and then she runs away. <laughs> That's basically that's basically what happened. Um, that's it for Holly and Wayne. So TJ and Kim, we only got them in the last episode. So <sighs> Jesus Christ. So everyone is eating without Kim because Kim doesn't come down. This is what you find out. She never comes downstairs. They, the family, but mom and, and Yash feel like they can't go upstairs either. And we'll get a little more information about that in a second. He, TJ's getting upset because they always complain about it. Mom says that she has only come down two or three times since they've gotten married. Y'all, they've been married for three months. So they blame all of this on her upbringing. I, I'm going to say this right now. It's so much more than her upbringing. 
There is something seriously wrong with this girl. We'll get to it. So TJ just feels like he's stuck in the middle. That's very fair. And he says, are you done speaking about it? Because I'm, I'm done talking about it. And mom's like, yeah. And Yash says, hopefully, y'all, I'm going to marry a Hindu girl. So this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So, yeah. In the next scene, we uh, hear from her and she says, like, marriage has not been blissful. It hasn't been this blissful honeymoon stage as, you know, people might say it should be. Um, she says that she doesn't feel comfortable going downstairs, um, because that there's always kind of been conflict, she says. And she gives an example of the fact that in order for the family downstairs to get to the roof, which as we kind of know, there are certain things that happen ritually happen on the roof. You should be able to have access to your roof at any point anyways. But yeah, so in order for them to have access to the roof, they have to go through her living room. She has asked them if they can at least ring the doorbell so that she makes sure that she's dressed. And they basically took that as her saying that they are not allowed upstairs. Here's what I'm going to say. That is fair. I think you should fair give me warning that you're coming through my fucking living room. What if I am? not dressed what if tj's still there and y'all you know fuck or something and they're just striping through the fucking living room there need to be certain boundaries for sure so i have no issue with her saying can you just bring the bell so i know um but anyways i took that as as uh, an issue um so now if she does go downstairs she'll get like hostile looks from the family so she just avoids it um, but she says, you know, I'm in this house full of people, but I feel alone. We see like this video of her crying about how positive she should be and she's not and whatever. Um, so then we see TJ coming in and he says, whenever she talks to TJ about it, he gets defensive. I'm going to, I'm going to hash this out between, actually, I'm going to do it here. With this, I think the problem is that neither of these two people know how to talk to each other at all. What she's saying in this moment is she does need support from him. But at the same time, she doesn't know how to properly relay how she is feeling and what she needs from him in a way where he can understand and isn't fucking yelling at him because she instantly yells at him in this moment. She says like one sentence calmly and then immediately resorts to, I'm going to fucking yell at you now. These two, first, no, neither of these two people need to be a relationship together. And as far as I'm concerned from this episode, from the tell all, my girl does not need to be a relationship with anybody until she gets some sort of help. She has a lot of baggage to unpack. She hasn't. Not that my opinion matters. Anyways, so... Anyway, she feels like her mental health is crumbling. I get it. She says that she feels isolated. She can't talk to her family or friends because due to the time difference. And, um, you know, he says, like, I cannot put um, his job on hold. He obviously, he needs to work. Um, and she feels depressed. And this is, I, there's no discounting. She is depressed. She just, her depression comes out in just bringing everyone down with her, which is not healthy. So she tells him basically, like, when we get into arguments, it's not healthy that you go downstairs and, um, uh, and not deal with the issue that that's at hand. But I don't remember actually talking about in, in the tell-all is they'll get into arguments and he'll dip downstairs for days she said the most that they have been like away from each other was 72 hours that's fucked up and the other thing too which i'll get to in a second once she says it is i hear kind of what she's saying this guy does not know how to handle 
a relationship but at the same time as kind of tim says like or not sorry not tim with shekinah who says why the fuck would he stay with you look the way you fucking talk to him that's true too so anyway he says that he doesn't feel um the f- yeah i think she sorry she says she doesn't feel the freedom to go down uh stairs she says you think i'm ignoring him they're ignoring them or they think too they, that i'm ignoring them i'm not i just don't um just don't have anything to say i'm not on good terms with them and he says that's the problem and she's like yeah that's the fucking problem and she just gets her back up immediately um and she's like no one wants to solve the issues with me they just want to bitch about it oh god and he then says are you crazy about this and then she says that's just sweet i've told you to not call me crazy i don't call you an asshole i don't call you a dick or a titty baby the fuck is a titty baby so she explains this on the tell which i realized i didn't talk about she literally says she calls him a titty baby due to the fact that anytime they have arguments he immediately runs to his mom which we see in this moment and runs to her and she basically told him to get off your mom's teeth again That is fair. If you're going to have an argument, you can't fucking run to your family and be like, she's fucking crazy. Help. Like, you know what I mean? Deal with your shit. You're married. You want to marry her. So be a husband to her then and deal with your shit. Anyways. Um, so yeah, doesn't call you titty baby. Let's move on. She says, I'm or he or sorry, he she says, I'm acting like a wife. But she says, like, you're not, I don't, okay, I can't, I can't remember what I said here, but I'm pretty sure he says that she's not acting like a wife, whatever. And he says, you are depressed for your own reasons. No shit. Everyone who's depressed are depressed for their own reasons. What is your point here? Anyways, um, she yells at him and she tells him, uh, or he tells her not to yell at him. Yeah, that's not going to go over well, apparently. He says, if you want to create drama, then cool. But I told you, if you feel depressed, then you can go back to the U.S. That's your fucking solution for her to go back to the States. What about your marriage? God. He's like, you can go whenever you want. She says, I don't want to be without my husband. But it doesn't feel like you want that you don't want to be without me. And he says, Do you want to find a new person? Again, that is your question to this. She's literally telling you, I don't feel like you want me. And this is what you say. This is what I mean. Neither one of these fuckers can talk to each other properly. This is ridiculous. Anyway, so he says that. Um, and he says, I feel like like I can't do anything she says but you can you can do something he's she's like you can support me she just wants him to listen to her which is all fair I think honestly we forget like sometimes and not just has nothing to even do with just an intimate relationship any relationship any friendship sometimes I want to vent and I just want you to listen and just listen to me that's all you need to do listening goes a long way so um she says you have to listen to me you're my husband you have to listen well he doesn't have to but you have to listen to me um for the rest of your life that is marriage and he says so um i think he says are you leaving or not i don't know and she feels like he doesn't care that she's depressed i don't think he understands depression that's what i feel like because for him to be so insensitive to how she is feeling in this moment is and again to turn it back around She's not being sensitive to him, but as she says, you don't tell me though. How am I supposed to know how you're feeling if you don't tell me? And I have that problem in my relationship too sometimes. He doesn't tell me when he's feeling things, but like 
also at the same time, I feel like, and they are still learning each other, but I can talk to my boyfriend through a text message and know something is wrong. And I can feel it in my bones that something is wrong. But again, this is someone I've known for years versus I don't, I can't remember how long they've known each other, but I feel like you should be able to be in tune with your partner and how they're feeling, but that goes for both of them. And if she's not in a place because she is depressed, then there is that as well. He says, so what do you want from, um, from me? And she says, you know, maybe you could give me hugs. And he says, and I quote, I am not going to do that. You're not going to hug your wife. Why wouldn't you hug your wife? That's confusing. Why wouldn't you hug your wife if she just wants a hug from you? She should be able to say, can you hug me or whatever? And you do it. Are you kidding me? Fucking marriage is this. Anyways. Um, she says, I, um, I know you, you won't, I think is what she says. And she says, I need someone to be there for me until death do us part. And you are not holding up your end of the bargain. He says, is this a duty of the husband? Well, this is a duty of your partner that you would be together till death do us part. You support each other. You, you do those things, but that is, that is a duty of not just the husband, but you, both of you. Um, he asks, okay, so what is the duty of the wife? And she, sorry. So yeah, he says, what is the duty of the wife? And he says, is that yelling at me? Fuck. Okay. Ugh. And she says, you told me that my duty was to keep the house uh, clean and going. And I have been doing all of that. So I am doing what I'm supposed to do. But what she missed here is you're also supposed to support him in everything as he should for you. Whatever support you may need emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever, he should be a, he should be doing that as well. That, but you should too. And he says to her, but what about my emotional state? What about what I'm going through? And she says, as I said before, you don't tell me if you need anything. And he says, you have all the rights to separate with me. But she says she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to separate with him. And then because he says something that basically kind of shows he's not fucking listening to her, but that doesn't matter for what is about to happen because she literally says no i said i don't want to separate from you and then the scream that was heard literally around the world for fu it's a demon scream she became a, a demon possessed her in this moment what the fuck like oh and she then, after she finishes her screaming, tells him to shut up. And he says, if you are trying to ruin the relationship, well, it's working. And he's like, I will end it right now. And she tells him, I hate you. Oh my God. These are the words you can't take back. I hate, it's a strong thing to say, but and he says, I hate you. And as I said before, he runs down to mommy to complain about this argument. And mommy basically says, let her go back to America. Maybe she'll be happier. Oh God, these fucking people, honestly, I, I just, I mean, he's horrible in his way. She's horrible in her way. That is not to me, like I, I actually say this in, in the Tell All Reek uh, episode. For me, how she treats other people, not just TJ, this is clearly something universal. She is just a raging bitch. I never want to see her on my screen again. And if she is on my screen again, I will not watch her. I will not cover her. I will be done with her. I don't want to talk about her again. She, 
Jesus, you guys really did it, DLC. You really did. Because I thought Amanda was, Amanda was, I miss her. I miss Amanda. Bring Amanda back. Who knew? Bring Ed back. Bring anybody back. Actually, don't bring Ed back. Don't do that. I don't need that in my life. But bring, bring Angela back. Bring Amanda back. Bring the biggest bitches I mean that just male and female. Bring all of them back. Bring all of them back. I would rather them over this bitch any day. I'm over her. She's done. I don't want her. I would... Ooh. Anyways, that's it for this episode of The Other Way. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast um, and you can rate a review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And I have a new thing that I want to start trying and that is that every four or five star review that we get, I'll read it on the podcast. So if you want to hear your review on the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're able to rate and review. Um, And if you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Reality Tea Times 2 on Facebook, Reality Tea Times 2 Podcast on Instagram or Threads, Reality Tea Times 2 Pod on Twitter. You can also find us on Reddit at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. And uh, you can also email us at Reality Tea Times 2 at hotmail.com. And don't forget, you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also subscribe, like, comment on there as well. We greatly appreciate that. And don't forget that I do have another podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different things. Um, We currently have, you know, this number can definitely change, but we currently have about eight episodes. Um, Roughly, we've talked about all kinds of different things. We have a lot of fun over there. So please go take a listen to us over at Next Take Podcast, which you can find us at on YouTube at Next Take Podcast. You can also find us on our website, solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. And don't forget, we have a website and that is at solo.to forward slash Reality Tea Times 2. And we also have a Discord and I believe that's reality tea times two as well. So you can find us there. Um, but that's basically it. That's all the stuff. Of course, everything here will that I've just listed will be in our show notes, all discount codes, um, special links to everything that we put in our ads are also in our show notes. And yeah, that's basically it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Have you ever thought of starting your very own podcast? Doing the research, I found something that would have made editing easy and seamless and makes the podcasting experience just that much easier. And I am talking about Ludo. This is a podcast software that I use for our editing of our episodes. It is amazing. It is easy. You're also able to get help from chat, doing chats and getting the information that maybe you just need a little more help with. They also have access to different articles that can also help you that have been just 
godsense for me. Also with Eludu, you can create clips, you can do your ads, that's thus like this very one I'm doing right now, and you can create your trailer very seamlessly just by the clicks of buttons. You can also use Eludu to publish your episodes just straight from the software. It's so easy. I highly, highly recommend it. You can get access to Eludu by using our unique link, which you can find on our show notes, just down there at the bottom at the show notes. And you can get access to an easy software.